Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here with this Tuesday morning mountain weather update. A few live cameras to just kind of set the table. We'll go up to the Tetons. This is Grand Targhee, the stick of truth. And I mean, there's a big pot of snow. You know, last night I looked at this and there was probably four or five inches on it. This morning it's about 13. So it continued to snow nicely overnight. Could still pick up another inch or two this morning for Grand Targhee and also Jackson Hole. All right, down into Colorado, it is snowing. This is Vail Pass. You can see the snow coming down. Um, I-70 is covered in snow. The trucks are likely chaining up there on I-70. Um, similar view up at Loveland Ski Area. You could still pick up, and you've gotten about two or three inches. You could still pick up another inch or two before all is said and done with this. And, and this is not a big storm system. Here's radar across the west. So, I mean, you're just barely seeing any blue show up across Wyoming, Utah, and also Colorado. I'll take you into Colorado in a second. But what you see up in the Pacific Northwest, that's the start of what's going to be our first atmospheric river setup of this season. And it still looks to be moderate in intensity. We'll do a complete update on that in a second. Let me take into Colorado, a little bit of snow moving through. This is not a major storm. You know, anywhere from two to five inches, uh, grand totals will likely do it uh, across Colorado with this uh, storm system. All right, over to water vapor satellite imagery. So on this, your oranges and reds are your drier air loft. The moisture loft is in the whites and the blues. And our, our storm system is sort of dragging this front through a lot of the inner mountain. But that's, that's minor. So back here, big trough of low pressure, steering all the weather around. And what you're seeing develop here is just sort of the leading edge of a big trough. There's some jet stream support, another storm system back here. So all this energy is gonna be spilling into the base of this trough and it's gonna to continue to build to the south and basically set up the jet stream in a fashion that's going to nail the west coast, BC, Washington State, Oregon, and a lot of the Sierra will get the brunt of this atmospheric river setup. And it still looks to be moderate in intensity. Here's the latest integrated vapor transport for that uh, San Francisco area all the way up into the Sierra. And again, moderate intensity right on the doorstep of being, you know, entry level strong, but definitely moderate. So what does that mean? Well, it means we're bringing in all this extra moisture off the Pacific. The jet stream is escorting it in almost like a fire hose and it's going to point it at different areas up and down the west coast and we're going to lift it over the Sierra and that's going to squeeze out heavy snow. There will be benefits for the interior states, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and also Colorado with this because you're going to get a lot of the blow off. And there's additional storm systems that will help carry it into the interior. My bullet points, moderate intensity atmospheric river 1120 through 1123. There is a total of three to four storm systems that will come off the Pacific, carrying the moisture into the interior states. Overall, the biggest numbers are gonna be in the Sierra, Cascades and the volcanoes, but there's still going to be some significant totals across the interior with all this overrun. Here are my key dates, timeline for best odds of snow in the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, and interior. So for example, um, I showed you the Tetons this morning, light accumulation up there today, light on 21, moderate intensity on 23, so moderate accumulations, light on 24, 25, and then heavy on 28. So several shots of snowfall for the Tetons. I'm looking at Tahoe, heavy 1120, that's the initial atmospheric river surge into 1121. And then PM 1122 through 24 is heavy and then moderate intensity or moderate accumulations on 1125. So there's a lot of snow that's yet to be had uh, once we get into this atmospheric river pattern. Let me take you up to Alta. Here's the forecast mediogram for Alta. And this is at about 9,000 feet. So um, this column is today, the 19th. Tomorrow's the 20th, 21, and early 22 over there. Let me take you down here. So definitely indicating some light additional snow this morning across the Wasatch, across Alta, Snowbird, Solitude, Brighton, of about a half an inch, not even quite half an inch. So just some very light snow, maybe a dusting of additional accumulation. And then it's dry for quite some time, all the way into the morning of 22. Um, and the numbers today will all be in the single digits up there, eventually warming into the teens. But singles this morning at about 6 and about 14 this afternoon. Warmer tomorrow, we start off at 15 and head towards 31 at 9,000 feet. All right, again, that's, uh, that's Alta, Utah. All right, let me take you into Colorado. 
So this is Loveland ski area. I showed you the live cam, some light leftover snow. So this is a humidity forecast, the time height forecast for all the layers in the atmosphere, looking at a vertical slice, timelines at the bottom from right to left. You can read that from right to left. It's roughly the next 72 to 80 hours. You can see that little green right there between today and tonight, and then it fades and drier air comes in. So there's, it's a very quick, shallow area of moisture moving through Colorado this morning through probably midday today, and then it moves out. And then we've got a couple of days of much drier weather across Colorado before we see the effects of the atmospheric river begin to move in. All right, let's talk jet stream. Really one of the mechanisms behind all of this, this AR setup. So that's by late today. <clears throat> now by Wednesday, late 11 p.m., you can see the jet stream. It's really focused, it's reaching all the way back towards Hawaii, and it's taking that fetch all the way up towards the Pacific Northwest, and eventually into that, uh, that Shasta area, and then eventually clipping Tahoe, and then eventually down to Mammoth. It's gonna take some time to get there though. Here we are in 1121. 1122. Look at that jet stream, that jet streak nailing parts of uh, Northern California, Oregon in on the mix. Um, here we are on 23. Notice the jet stream starting to translate into the interior states, interior Rockies. And 24, jet stream comes even further to the south, mammoths in the equation, and this runs the precip straight west to east. So through Utah and straight into the western slope of Colorado, we should lift that real nicely. Tetons are in on the action. 25, 26, storm system. You can see the different troughs moving through. I mean, there's several storm systems to carry this through. All right, let's look at the forecast uh, radar and satellite. So by 5.30 this afternoon, there's your setup. It's really all about the big storm hitting the West Coast, and that's, that's a major storm system. And we could see valley flooding out of this across the West Coast. All right, so by Wednesday morning, there you go. Heavy snow, Shasta, up to Oregon, Washington, B.C., Idaho, moving into northwest Montana. Tahoe's finally in on the action. High snow levels, that's what you typically see with these atmospheric rivers. It pushes the snow level up because of the warmer air. Here we are on 21 late. Here's 22. Next storm system moving in. That one does affect the rest of the Sierra all the way down to Mammoth. And look at Idaho and the Tetons getting nailed, parts of northwest Montana and B.C., here we are on 23 in the afternoon. Now, by the time we get into 24, the flow starts to shift to the south. That starts to set up a band of snow across the Wasatch, the High Uintas, and then eventually targeting the western slope of Colorado by 24 afternoon. Look at that. That should be really good for the western slope of Colorado. And there's 25, same thing. Another storm system comes in, moves in through the interior, and that might not be in. Look to the north. That could be um, an Arctic type of setup with an Arctic front coming south, or at least a Canadian front coming south there on late 28. So the pattern just continues to roll on um, through late November. All right, my latest number. So um, all of today through tomorrow. In Colorado, another one or two inches, maybe a dusting in the Wasatch, another one to two for the Tetons, uh, potentially up to seven for Schweitzer on the way. Um, and then the big numbers, everything starts to build in as we hit 1120 for the West Coast, looking at potentially three feet over the top of Mount Shasta, could see six, seven, eight inches over um, Tahoe. And then you could see nice numbers up and down the, the Cascades and up into BC. Now this period is still looking big. We add another couple of feet there for Shasta, Tahoe down to Mammoth, a couple of feet up there in the Pacific Northwest. And look at interior BC, one to two feet potentially ferny. Red Mountain Kicking Horse and Red Mountain Schweitzer does good. Sun Valley, Brundage between 8 and 14 inches. Northwest Montana is looking good. Potentially 6 to 12 across the Wasatch. In Colorado, the numbers have bounced back up as a result of the targeting with the jet, and we're looking at 1 to 2 feet of accumulation across especially the western slope of Colorado. You can see that's where the biggest numbers are. I mean, so there's a lot of potential here, especially, and again, it just really all depends on at what at what latitude does the, the jet set up and what latitude does this AR moisture come in between 20 and 28? All right, guys, that's going to do it for this, uh, this morning mountain weather update on this Tuesday. I appreciate you tuning in here and take care.